If you're brand new to Video Studio, don't worry, you're in the right place. I'll take you through the basics of what you need to know to get started. When you first launch Video Studio, you'll see the home screen. Let's assume you've already got some footage that you want to edit, but if you don't, you can go to Capture to record your screen, your webcam, or import from physical media. If you do have footage, just click Edit and you'll be on the main editing screen. At the bottom is the timeline. Top right is your library and options panels, and on the left is the video preview pane. In the middle are the library folder icons. You can see we're currently viewing the media library. There's already some videos and photos in the library that comes included with Video Studio. But let's import some of our own footage. I'll create a new folder to keep things organized. Then click Browse, find my footage on my computer, select it all, and drag it into the folder I just created. I can show just video files, images, or audio files with these icons, or start typing the name of the file I'm looking for in the search bar. To speed things up with a new edit, you can try using a template. Click the templates icon and then instant project. Then just drag and drop the one that you like to the timeline. Instant projects have placeholder graphics. Click the one you want to replace, go back to your media library, and drag the clip you want to replace it with while holding down control. You can quickly put a great looking edit together with templates. You don't have to use templates though. Let's start a new project. By default, the timeline has one main video track one track for overlays, which is other media that you want to appear over the top of your main video, and then tracks for titles, voice, and music. To add media to the timeline, simply drag and drop a clip. By default, the first clip you add to the timeline sets your project's properties, the resolution and size of the project, which are also shown up here. In your media library, a check mark appears on the clip you've added, showing you which clips you've already used. You can also audition clips before you add them to the timeline. Just select a clip in your library and press the play button or the spacebar. Notice that next to the play button is project or clip. As you're playing a single clip right now, this shows as clip playing. If you decide you want to add that clip, just drag and drop on the main video track again. You can put it before or after the first clip. Now we're building a timeline of different video clips. Click Project next to the Play button, and the clip you've just added is unselected. And if we click Play now, the whole timeline will play, and not just the clip that we just added. Or we can grab the scrubber and scrub through our project. We can zoom in and zoom out on the timeline by using the zoom icons to the right. Or click the Auto Fit button to snap all of the timeline into view at once. To trim the length of a video clip, click the clip you want to trim then move the mouse near the yellow boundary and drag inwards. To split a clip, move the scrubber along the timeline to where you want the split to be, and press the split clip button, or S, on your keyboard. You can then move either of these parts of the old clip. Let's put this one after the second clip, or delete the part that you don't want by right-clicking and delete, or just press delete on your keyboard. To resize or reposition your clip on the screen, select the clip on the timeline, then go to Distort Tools and turn on Scale Mode. Now you can resize by dragging one of the yellow squares and reposition the clip by dragging it. Or you can crop the clip by turning Crop Mode on and dragging one of the clip boundaries. Notice how cropping is different to scaling. Cropping keeps the video file looking the same but removes some of it, while scaling squishes the video around within a new clip boundary. Let's add another clip to the timeline, and then click to open the Transitions library. At the moment, as one clip ends, the next one begins. Transitions are short animations that use parts of both clips at the same time to make the change between clips more interesting. Just drag and drop a transition at the boundary between two clips. And we can change the length of the transition when it starts and ends 
by clicking the transition and dragging the transition's edges. Double click a transition to see the transition's options. I can make the circle transition shrink rather than grow and soften its edges. Now that you're in the options panel, just click here to get back to the library panel. You can apply the same transition to every edit point at once by right clicking the transition in the library and click apply current effect to video track. You could do this with a timeline of photos to quickly create a slideshow. We can add effects to clips in the same way as transitions. Just click the effects icon and I'll drag a lens flare and maybe a dark vignette onto this clip. To edit effects, just double click the clip. This opens the clips options panel. From edit, you can change the speed of the clip, reverse it, or pan and zoom across the clip. From effects, customize how the effect displays, change the order of effects, toggle effects on and off, or remove effects entirely. At color, you've got access to a whole host of color correction tools. For example, you could change the brightness or add a LUT effect to your clip. And there's even lens correction for non-standard camera footage. So far, we've only been working on the main video track, but we can add overlays as well. Click the overlays icon and drag a shape or animated overlay onto overlay track one. This animated border would be great with some text in it. And we can right click it to change its size and shape and reposition it just like a video clip. Videos or photos can be overlays as well. Drag a clip from your media library onto the overlay track and it defaults to a smaller size so you can reposition or resize the overlay video where you want it to be. Let's go back and add some text in the animated box that we added earlier. To create text, just click the titles icon and double click in the preview pane. Write your text and you can change the font and the font size. Then click on the timeline to commit the text. You can reposition the text clip on the timeline and as long as the text clip is selected, you can change the position of the text itself on the preview pane. When we add a video with audio to our timeline, the clip will have a speaker icon. And if we click Sound Mixer from the toolbar, we can see the audio waves attached to the video. We can make adjustments to the existing audio track by double clicking the clip to open the editor. And we can adjust the volume or apply a fade in and fade out effect. By right clicking on the clip, we can either mute audio or split the audio to another track. Video Studio comes with a royalty-free music and sound effects library, which you can use in your videos. Drag the one you want to either the voice or music tracks on your timeline. Or you can use auto music to fit music automatically to your whole timeline. Put the scrubber at the start of your edit. Click Auto Music. Select the feel you want. And then click Add to Timeline. As you edit, don't forget to save as you go along. To save your project so you can open your working file to continue editing later, select File and Save As. Once you're done with your video, go to Share and you can export to popular formats. Upload online to your social channels from within Video Studio. Or burn straight to a disc. And with just a couple of extra tweaks behind the scenes, here's how our quick edit has worked out. This getting started tutorial has only scratched the surface of what can be achieved with Video Studio. For more tutorials, visit the Home tab inside Video Studio or our YouTube channel at Corel Video Studio.